What if I told you that the true story of Scotland isn't carved into castles or written in ancient texts, but hidden deep inside its blood? Because Scottish DNA is one of the strangest in the world. Inside it, we find Ice Age hunters with dark skin and piercing blue eyes, Bronze Age migrants who nearly erased entire bloodlines, and Viking markers so strong they outshine Norway itself. And here's the twist. Being Viking wasn't even about genetics at all. It was about identity. This entire mystery only came to light after scientists sequenced the very first ancient human genome. The result? A revelation that shattered the old idea of Scotland as mostly Celtic with a dash of Viking. The reality is far more shocking. Fragments of forgotten peoples are still alive today. Mesolithic foragers, painted Picts, even faint echoes of North Africa and Siberia. And in certain glens and islands, lineages have survived untouched for 10,000 years. Scotland's DNA is not just ancestry, it's a time capsule. Let's rewind. 12,000 years ago, Scotland wasn't a land of clans or castles. It was buried under ice. But as the glaciers melted, animals returned and small bands of hunters followed. Here's where things get wild. DNA reconstructions reveal those first Scots didn't look anything like we'd expect. They had dark skin, curly hair and striking blue eyes. These Mesolithic foragers fished the coasts, hunted deer and built campfires that left faint scars in the soil and their legacy didn't vanish. Today, around 5-10% of modern Scots still carry their genetic markers. That's like a living fossil. Bloodlines preserved for over 10,000 years thanks to the rugged isolation of the highlands and islands. While the rest of Europe was constantly reshaped by migrations, Scotland's mountains and sea locks shielded these ancient lineages. But their survival wouldn't last forever. Because thousands of years later, a new wave of people arrived. Outsiders with new tools, new culture and DNA powerful enough to rewrite Scotland's story. Around 4,500 years ago, a new people swept into Scotland from Central Europe. Archaeologists call them the Beaker Folk, named after their distinctive bell-shaped pottery. But their pottery wasn't what changed Scotland forever. It was their DNA. Within just a few centuries, the Beaker newcomers rewrote the very bloodlines of Britain. Genetic studies reveal something jaw-dropping. They replaced up to 90% of all male lineages. Nine out of ten paternal bloodlines were wiped from the record. This wasn't a sudden conquest or massacre. It happened gradually, through marriages, families merging and old lines fading while new ones thrived. Still, the result was staggering. Almost overnight in genetic terms, Scotland's male ancestry had been transformed. But here's the twist. In the rugged highlands and the scattered islands, the old bloodlines clung on. Protected by geography, some fragments of Mesolithic DNA survived. That's why today Scottish DNA feels so unusual. It's part Ice Age survivor, part Beaker invader. It's like weaving tartan with two very different threads, one ancient, one new. And together they formed a foundation that would shape every chapter of Scotland's future. But the story didn't end there. Soon a mysterious group would rise, warriors so fierce they painted their bodies blue and left even Rome trembling. And for centuries, people thought they vanished. DNA proves otherwise. By the time the Bronze Age faded, a new identity had taken root in northern Scotland. The Picts. To the Romans, they were the Picti, the Painted Ones. Fierce tribes who covered their bodies in dye, carved mysterious symbols into stone, and fought like ghosts in the mist. For centuries, their fate was one of history's great puzzles. Who were the Picts, and why did they seem to vanish? DNA has solved that mystery. The Picts weren't outsiders at all. They were descendants of Scotland's own Mesolithic foragers and beaker folk, and they didn't disappear. They blended. As Gaelic culture spread, the Picts traded their language and identity, but their bloodlines lived on. Even today, Highland, DNA carries their genetic echo, but the Picts weren't the only ones shaping Scotland's story. Rome, the greatest empire of its time, marched north in the first century AD, naming this land Caledonia. They built walls, forts and roads, but they never conquered the Highlands. The Romans came face to face with Scotland's rugged terrain and unyielding tribes, and even their might couldn't break it. Yet Rome still left a trace, through blood, not conquest. 
Soldiers stationed on Hadrian's Wall weren't just Italians. They came from Spain, Gaul, Syria, even North Africa. Some lived, died, and had families along the frontier. Their children carried genetic markers that traveled thousands of miles all the way to Scotland. Today, scientists have found faint but undeniable traces of Mediterranean and Middle Eastern DNA in the South. Rare, but real. Proof that even at the edge of the empire, Scotland absorbed the world quietly through families, not armies. And when Rome finally withdrew, Scotland didn't grow quieter. The horizon filled with sails, longships, and with them came a storm of settlers whose genetic imprint still runs deep today. When Rome finally pulled back from Britain in the fifth century, Scotland became a land of mystery to outsiders. No legions, no empire, just fragmented tribes holding on to their own ways of life. To the rest of Europe, this northern frontier seemed like the edge of the known world. It was during this age of shadows that Scotland's identity hardened. Isolated, communities preserved ancient languages, customs and bloodlines that elsewhere in Europe were lost to time. Archaeologists find hints of shifting alliances, tribal kingdoms rising and falling, and hill forts that overlooked landscapes already scarred by centuries of survival. What's fascinating is how much DNA from this period still pulses through modern Scots. Studies suggest that while central and southern Britain became heavily mixed with newcomers after Rome's fall, Scotland remained more insulated. Its geography once again acted like a shield, keeping older lineages alive. This is why, even today, people in the Highlands often carry genetic markers that connect directly back to Mesolithic foragers and Bronze Age beakers. And it wasn't just genes that survived, it was stories. Myths of giants, heroes and painted warriors carried echoes of real bloodlines stretching back thousands of years. Scotland entered the medieval era with its DNA already shaped by survival, by blending and by holding on when the rest of the world was changing. But this period of quiet isolation wasn't destined to last. Soon sails would appear on the northern seas, longships filled with settlers who left a genetic mark so deep parts of Scotland still carry more Viking blood than Norway itself. Picture the northern coasts of Scotland around the late 700s. The sea is calm, the horizon quiet, until longships slice through the waves. The Vikings had arrived, and they didn't just raid, they settled. Islands like Orkney and Shetland became Norse strongholds where families farmed, traded and raised children. The DNA evidence is staggering. Up to 60% of male lines in Orkney today are Norse in origin, higher than in many parts of Norway itself. Modern Orcadian families carry more Viking blood than Scandinavians. That's how deep the Norse imprint went. Their legacy spread far beyond the islands. The Hebrides, the Highlands, even the aristocracy carried Norse blood. When Norman nobles, descendants of Vikings who had settled in France, rose to power in Scotland, names like Bruce, Stuart and Sinclair carried Viking roots into the nation's ruling class. But here's where the story takes another strange turn the famous Scottish clans. For centuries, clans were thought to be giant family trees, lineages stretching back to single ancestors. But DNA tells a different story. Some clans, like the Campbells, really do trace to one powerful founder. Their Y chromosomes are tightly linked, proving a true dynasty that spread for generations. But others, like the mighty McDonald's, were far more complicated. Men with completely different Y chromosomes all carried the same surname. Why? because in times of war, defeat, or shifting power, families adopted the name of the ruling clan. Belonging wasn't about blood, it was about protection, allegiance, and survival. Scotland's geography only deepened the mystery. On isolated, islands like Lewis or Islay, rare DNA markers were preserved that exist nowhere else in Europe. That's why the Scottish genome looks so unusual. It's part Viking, part Ice Age survivor, part Beaker farmer, part dynasty and part adopted. Name a patchwork stitched by survival. But hidden inside this patchwork are outliers so rare they seem almost impossible. Bloodlines that connect Scotland not just to Europe, but to deserts, steppes and worlds far beyond. Most of Scotland's DNA comes from Europe. Ice Age foragers, beaker farmers, Celtic tribes, Viking settlers. But every so often, scientists stumble across something that stops them in their tracks. Outliers. In rare Scottish family lines,
DNA markers appear from places thousands of miles away. North Africa, the Middle East, even Siberia. Less than 1% of Scots carry these signatures, but their existence is stunning. How did they get here? Some likely arrived with Roman recruits from far off lands. Others may have traveled along Viking trade routes that stretched from the North Atlantic to Russia and beyond. Imagine this, a fisherman in the Outer Hebrides carrying DNA that traces back to the Sahara. A Highland family unknowingly holding genes that once crossed the Silk Road. Even on the edge of the world, Scotland was never truly isolated. And then, there's the fiery marker Scotland is most famous for, red hair. Only about 1-2% of the world has it, but in Scotland, the number skyrockets to around 13%, the highest anywhere on Earth. This trait comes from mutations in the MC1R gene also, linked to pale skin and freckles. It helped people absorb more sunlight in northern latitudes, but it also brought side effects, greater pain sensitivity and higher risk of skin cancer. Scotland's rugged isolation preserved not only ancient lineages, but quirks of biology that still shape its people today. But Scotland's DNA didn't stay locked in the Highlands. Over the last three centuries, millions left, driven by famine, the Highland clearances, or the promise of opportunity abroad. They carried their bloodlines to America, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Today, more than 30 million people worldwide claim Scottish ancestry. In the US alone, Scots and Scots-Irish settlers left a massive impact. In places like Appalachia, their music, traditions, and yes, their DNA, still echo through generations. In rugged glens and windswept islands, ancient bloodlines endured when history tried to erase them. From Ice Age hunters to Viking warriors, from painted Picts to far-flung traders, every Scot alive today is living proof of survival. And every descendant abroad is evidence that identity can outlast invasions, empires and even time itself. If this story fascinated you, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps bring these hidden histories to more people. And tell us in the comments what shocked you the most. The Ice Age survivors, the Viking dominance, or those rare DNA links to faraway deserts. Your answer might inspire the next journey we take.